everybody. Welcome back to episode every eight. Oh, I need to restart my screen. I'm telling you, my mouth doesn't like me today. And so, um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode 86 of Talk Bay Podcast. Your host, Kelly Montini. I'm so excited to have on singer songwriter and host of She's on the List podcast, Liv Shoret. Thanks so much, Ron Liv. Thanks so much for having me, Kylie. I'm so excited to be here. Same here. I'm really so excited to have you on. So, um, <laughs> You are a singer-songwriter. What made you want to start doing that and being part of this music industry? Man, uh, this is like, it was kind of one of those things, honestly, that I didn't expect to happen in a way. I mean, my family is very, like, musical. My grandfather was and still is a singer and my uncle as well. But my path sort of started first as a figure skater. And I started figure skating when I was three years old. And then I did that competitively. I was doing it like six days a week, doing ballet lessons, had like three different coaches, had a personal trainer, and it just got to be like a lot. And my like little 14 year old self after doing that for like 11 years was like, I don't know, I think I need a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a break. And when I decided to not figure skate anymore, I was sort of trying to find like, what is my passion again? And literally my parents went away on vacation (laughs) one weekend and I was staying with my grandparents and I was like, Papa, can you teach me how to sing? Like, I love music and everything. And it was kind of something we could bond over. And he's like, absolutely. So we bonded over some ABBA music (laughs) and we sang lots of ABBA songs together. And then my parents came back and I was like, I want to show you something. They're like, okay, not expecting too much. And I sang for them and they were like, um, okay, did not know that you could sing. So that's sort of where it all started. And then went into vocal lessons and, you know, started coming to Nashville when I was like 18. And it's just sort of one of those things. I feel like anytime I do anything, I do it like (laughs) full force. I'm like, if I'm going to do it, might as well do it like in a big way. So Mm -hmm. I've been super committed to it ever since. And here I am in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Like, what was, like, the hardest part for you, like, doing a figure skating and all those things? Just for me, every time I do figure skating and all those things, I literally trip in the first, like, five seconds. I'm so bad. <laughs> I mean, I think it was something for me that really came naturally. Like, my mom and dad, we went skating. I remember, I think, as a kid, like, before I was ever in lessons, and she put me on skates, and I literally started just going, and I was standing up no problem and my mom's like well I think this might be something that she could be really good at or it might be something good for her to to do so literally I started doing um like little group lessons when I was three years old and it just kind of escalated from there and my mom was actually a skater for when she was a kid too actually for a few years and she was like I think she would really enjoy this and sports was like one of those things too that um, growing up was like important in my family to be like yeah. involved in other things not just focusing on like school and studies or whatever like my parents really thought it was important to yeah that's how my family know. was too yeah my yeah my family's very sporty as well you like sports has always been a huge part in my family's lives so they're like we need to put this kid in sports or else like this, this is gonna be embarrassing in our family <laughs> I know. And it's like, I think it's a great thing to not only like, you know, obviously keep you healthy and in shape, but I think sports really teach you a lot of like actual life lessons. And for me, even though I like, I mean, I skate sometimes, I still like to go and do it for fun. But for me, like skating really taught me how to like, you know, compete, how to be put on the spot, how to be like, you know, to perform in front of judges when everybody's looking for you, looking at you. <laughs> and like, as a, as a singer on stage, when you're, you know, on stage, everybody's looking at you. So it really prepared me for the big stages as well. So. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So you recently came out with a song called Game Over. What was yeah. your inspiration for Game Over? Oh my. Okay. So Game Over is actually probably one of my favorite songs that I've ever written. Uh, Last year, I got to go to LA for a writing trip and I was there for almost a week and we just kind of jam packed it with a bunch of sessions. And I just like wrote and wrote and wrote some of my favorite stuff and Game Over kind of came out of that trip. And um, 
I've always been a bit of a video game nerd. I love video games and I grew up playing like Nintendo. I had every like handheld console you can name. <laughs> like just, that's always been my thing. You can see my Nintendo Switch actually in the background over there. Cause I just, I love playing video games. And I wrote this title down and actually um, my producer, Jason Mater, who I also wrote the, the song with, he kind of was like putting this track together as we were writing and it just had so many cool like sounds that reminded me of that like nostalgic video game you know thing when I was young and I was like I feel like this is the right fit for this kind of um hook so mm -hmm. we just kind of went down that road added even more nostalgic sounds like things like sound sounds that are kind of like you know when you start up your Game Boy and it does a little ding sound you know just little little things that I think people if they grew up playing video games would hear and be like oh I recognize that sound <laughs> yeah, so. exactly and yeah. so you are the host of podcast she's on the list can you tell us more about that and why you started sure oh my goodness um so she's on the list is kind of like my little baby I have so much fun recording the podcast and it's only been my goodness I guess we launched it in May at the same time um as game over coming out which was super fun for my management team they're like really <laughs> all the yeah. things but I'm like that's okay you know um but no she's on the list for me is really like this podcast where I get to kind of nerd out about everything and anything that sort of like is of interest of me specifically I would say with like a lifestyle beauty makeup cocktail culture kind of um you know, overlying theme. So a lot of stuff that could be even just like what's relevant in the news too, or what's sort of going on, like the last episode um, that just came out, I guess yesterday actually was all about the new JLo documentary. And oh just my kind God, of my thoughts. it was so good. I was really obsessed with that documentary. I was so good. It was so it was awesome. So good. But... I was really like, crying. It was so good. I know. I know. She's incredible. And for me, it's just kind of like an outlet to be able to do like, you know, extra research and dive into things that maybe I wouldn't normally be doing all my day to day because I'm so focused on music. So for mm -hmm. me, it's a bit of an escape to be able to dive into all of my other interests because I just feel like I have so much to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I need to let this all out in a podcast. So I finally yeah, in case the... like you don't have anyone talk to you, like, oh, what's let it all out? Yeah. Okay, so, so, so. Yeah. That's how I am. Like if I have I was allowed to think about it. I'm like, I'm going to see this during this episode or something. Yeah, it's so much fun. And it's such a creative outlet. Outlet, And it lets me kind of just nerd out about things that, you know, it gives me an excuse to nerd out about things and do mm -hmm. research. And <laughs> and hopefully um, other people learn stuff too. Or I'm a fun companion on a road trip or, a, you know, a plane ride or something. Because that's what I like to do when I'm on on the road or whatever I love to listen to podcasts so I'm Me like too. why not why not start my own you know <laughs> yeah exactly I was also a big podcast fan as well before I even started it so I was like I know how to start pop podcasts even though like I love podcasts like do you yeah. have a favorite podcast that you listen to what sorry like do you have a favorite podcast that you listen to because like I'm literally looking mm. for suggestions on podcasts because I'm like getting bored of listening to the same old podcast every single day Ooh, okay so I feel like when I'm like driving or I'm in, in in the airplane or whatever, I tend to dive into like true crime ones. I don't know what oh, it yeah. is about being like, if I have like an eight hour drive, drive for some reason, I just want to listen to like true crime ones, but mm -hmm. you can only listen to so many of those because after a while it's like, okay, that's a lot of murder. <laughs> let's let's yeah. take a, take a <laughs> spin off that. Um, some of my favorite of those um, are morbid and my favorite murder. And then as far as like lifestyle ones go, um, I've been following a lot of like YouTubers and influencers for a really long time. So I love to listen to like Pretty Basic with Alicia Marie and Remy Cruz. And then I also listen to um, Thick and Thin by Katie Bellotti and just love kind of, you know, keeping up with them. And Katie's is always a lot of fun too, because she usually has a sort of storytelling component, kind of catch up with her life, but also there's usually some historical fact that comes into it every so often and, and I always enjoy those little storyteller moments. <laughs> yeah, do you listen to Dr. Dax Shepard uh, podcast as well or you don't? 
Ooh, I haven't heard that one. No. What's yeah, that one all Dark about? Shepherd thing has been on for going on for like two or three years, I think. It's been going on since like 2019. It's really good. Ooh, and like big okay. celebrity interviews, like Anderson Cooper, some other big stars, Alan Pompeo. There's so many. Like, there's so many big stars on it. I really recommend it. It's so good. Ooh, I'm gonna have to check that out for sure. I'm always looking for new podcasts, so I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> And so do you have a favorite like podcast episode that you filmed on the on list or something that kind of meant the most to you or stuck out to you? Mm, this is tough. I would say, honestly, it's a split between the JLo one that I just put out because I really felt like as an artist, I was able to really relate to everything that she was talking about in that mm-hmm. documentary and just kind of I don't know, appreciating her story so much. I felt like I had a lot to say about it. Yeah. Um, so that one I really, really enjoyed. And then I actually really enjoyed recording the very first episode. I think it was one of those things where I was, you know, trying to set the tone of the the format of how I wanted it to sort of flow. So sort of doing like a little catch up at the beginning and then talking about what we're, what the subject is that day. And then I do a little section at the end called bottle service where I talk about my favorite drink of the week and then four of my favorite products. So I had a lot of fun kind of doing the first episode and talking about the inspiration behind the actual cover of the podcast, which was um, the Beverly Hills Hotel. So I did a whole episode dedicated to the Beverly Hills Hotel and its history and story. And I actually got to go there while I was in LA and I really felt like that was like a, like a pivotal moment for me in my career to be able to go to LA and write a lot of songs and be like, you know, those pinch me moments. Like here I am in the polo lounge <laughs> and I'm yeah. writing songs and I'm like, this is everything I, I could have ever dreamed of and I'm doing the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of was the inspiration behind this podcast because I just felt so, I don't know, alive and, and so inspired in that moment. So I decided to kind of put it as the background of the She's on the List cover. And yeah, so that that's kind of, I would say, one of my favorites. And also a funny moment that like was not intentionally planned at all, but one of those like want, meant to be kind of moments was mm-hmm. the day that it was released, I think it was May the 12th. The day it was released was actually the 110th anniversary of the hotel, which was not Wait, planned. Really? Yeah, it wasn't planned at all. And I was like, okay. It's like one of those, you know, little signs that maybe <laughs> I'm like, I'm I guess on the it's right like path. one of those months of the moments that you literally had to post it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what are the odds? Like, here I am recording this, but it's not like registering in my head that it was built on that day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it ends up being like, released. It was I'm like, actually built on this day. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, what the heck? I mean, <laughs> so, out of all these days, it's this day. I really. Yeah. It. It's crazy. Yeah. And so you were featured by Roller, Rolling Stone as a powerhouse vocalist. Like, did you ever kind of expect in your career in music and this in general to get a bunch of recognition for your music and all that stuff? Man, I mean, when the articles came out and, and Rolling Stone and, and Billboard, that was seriously one of those like pivotal moments, definitely in my career that I'll always remember. And just you know seeing seeing my name <laughs> included amongst all these amazing artists and being kind of the, the featured um song of the week and all that stuff it, it truly meant the world and I guess like I don't know if I like ex- I'm not necessarily maybe expected it but in the sense that you know I've worked insanely hard so to get that recognition from an outlet or well a few outlets that you know really um love my music just really meant the world and kind of solidified that you know I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing and um I don't think anybody really does it necessarily for the recognition or for the awards if they do maybe they're in it for the wrong reasons yeah (laughs) but as an artist it's always nice to kind of be recognized in that way and you know recognized amongst like your peers or people that are in the industry that you know really admire what you do so it, it really meant a lot to me uh to have that and I have, yeah. I have the article framed in my house just as a reminder on those days and I'm like maybe feeling a little down just look at that look at that article I'm like okay 
Yeah. Give me some okay. little motivation, Ricky <laughs> Day, a little bit brighter. Yeah, yeah. That's what we do celebrate. in our documentary. Like, if you are in it for wars and stuff, like, you're really in it for the wrong reason. That's exactly what she said. I just, like, yeah. what this on, like, that clip. I was like, that clip. Yep, yep, absolutely. And so, like, what kind of inspires you to write your music? Like, personal experiences or anything that kind of inspires your music? I would say so many different things. I am definitely the lyricist, I would say, in the room. I feel like lately I've actually had a lot of input on melody as well, but typically I'm such a, a stickler for words and I will, you know, fight a line sometimes if it's not like the right line. I always say to like people that I write with, I'm like, I'd rather reschedule a second date and really get this right than to try to rush through something and it be something that we're both or the three of us aren't like super proud of. So yeah. Um, that's kind of always been my philosophy, being a little bit of a perfectionist, but I'm also, I just love having a really, really strong hook, and that's kind of where I like to start things off with, and that often does come from, you know, personal experience. Um, it could be, you know, channeled through, like, friendships or relationships or even, like, my friend's <laughs> crazy stories sometimes, too. You're just like, man, I got to write that one down because that is a great hook for a song. Thank you very much. So, yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's girl talk. That make you want to write something down. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes even like um, podcasts, honestly, I have written down things during like podcasts that people have said. And I'm like, that's a great way to put it. I love that metaphor. Or um, my other song, Red Flags White, was literally inspired from something a Peloton instructor said, Kendall Tool, while I was riding the bike, she was talking about bleaching red flags white in her life and ignoring you know the signs of you know maybe somebody isn't the right fit for you but you just keep pursuing that relationship because you just want it to work out so bad and I was like I love that visual of red flags white and I had to write it down <laughs> just on my peloton I'm like on my phone I'm like okay <laughs> resume ride okay we're good <laughs> yeah and so do you have anyone they really look up to as a singer songwriter is this in jar well do you have anyone that you look up to oh so many people <laughs> yeah that's how I am I'm like do you have to choose one or a couple of specific people there's so many yeah I would honestly say a lot of powerhouse females that have kind of come before me and helped pave the way for artists like me um, one of them being Tina Turner. I've always been such a big fan of hers. And as a kid, my parents and I used to watch like her DVD live concerts. And that's kind of something, something that we do like on weekends or whatever. We'd, you know, watch it on the big screen. And I just always admired her as a performer. I also love like rockers like Pat Benatar and people that just give it all out on the stage. Pink. I mean, I want to see her in concert so bad. I can't believe I haven't seen her yet, but it will happen. <laughs> yeah, Pink is so amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's incredible. And people that are just, like, I don't know, insanely talented vocalists. Because for me, like, just I, I really admire that in people being able to sound exactly like their records. <laughs> yeah. And, and live, you know, sounding amazing live, but also putting on a show and giving it all on the stage and leaving no stone unturned. Like they, they really always give their 100%. And I admire that in, in all of those amazing, incredible artists. I love that. Like, if you could really collab with any singer songwriter, who would be in like country music or any genre? Ooh, man. You know, I guess like if it's like modern music, like right now, I would love to do a duet with Dua Lipa. She's mm -hmm. like my, oh my gosh, I love amazing. everything. I know. I love everything Dua Lipa. I got to see her in Nashville at her concert and she was just like amazing. And there's just something about seeing like a pop show that I just absolutely love because there's so much like theatrics in it. There's so many lights and it's like, it's a really big like production. So mm -hmm. I love that. And so I, yeah, her or I also love Miley Cyrus and I, I love her rocker phase. I'm like, yeah. I, I would love to do a, a rock song with her and just freaking belt it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Miley Cyrus is literally the queen, seriously. She's, she's incredible and she just keeps like evolving and like, oh, she's just, she's awesome. <laughs> exactly. So the final question is, what is the advice for younger generations that to be like a singer-songwriter? 
Ooh. You know, I would say um, always do it because you love it and always remind yourself why you're doing it. I would also say, you know, surround yourself with people that you trust because that for me has always been the key to, I think, any success that I've been able to have is to just have a really strong support system, whether that's like my family, my friends, but also like my team around me that believe in me, you know, as much as I believe in myself and understand my vision and understand like what I stand for and can (laughs) sometimes even like, you know, when they're in situations, they know what I would say or, or how I would react and basically being like (laughs) inside my brain. And that's what I'm really grateful to have is, you know, an, an amazing circle of people that are just like insanely hardworking and just understand me. So I would say like, find those people because if you haven't found them yet they are out there and they will believe in your vision like never sacrifice who you are and what you stand for and the music that you want to sing about like don't let people try to change that if you really believe in it in your heart that it's what you're supposed to be doing exactly I really 100% agree with that seriously (laughs) I just want to thank you so much for jumping on the podcast that's please so much it was such a pleasure to be with you it really means a lot it was and we'll definitely see you soon for sure. Thanks so much. Aw, thank you so much for having me. And you're so incredible and so inspiring. And I love what you're doing. And just keep keep going. Oh my God, thank <laughs> you are you so a boss much. babe. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. And make sure, where can people find you on Instagram, by the way? And like social media. Yes. So you can follow me at Liv Charette on most things for some reason not on tiktok though because that name was taken i'm like i feel like my name is very unique but <laughs> on tiktok, TikTok it's at, yeah on tiktok it's at live charette official that's really where i would say i'm the most active also on instagram too and if you want to check out the podcast it's available on all platforms just look up she's on the list also have an instagram for that that is my fun little creative outlet of doing like little sassy memes and and throwback pictures so it's a lot of fun so you can follow that at at she's on the list pod on instagram awesome thank you so much everyone go follow her and yeah i thank you so much for listening to today's episode and catch us soon next couple of weeks thanks so much thank you we'll see you guys later bye